<laughs> oh boy. So we were progressing more with the Impact Kenny Omega AEW crossover event storyline that is taking the wrestling world by storm. Except in WWE, they're still focusing on Goldberg, but that's a different matter. Uh, <laughs> so, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers with Don Callis were set to were announced to appear on Impact Wrestling this week, and they did on their signature bus, just talking about Hard to Kill, their upcoming six man tag team match, and how everything's set in stone. We're the best in the world. We're the best. We're the best. We're the best. The best. The best. The best. The best. And they're just hanging around, chilling. And then uh, Rich Swan and his buddies, uh, <laughs> the Motor City Machine Guns, come out and are naturally pissed, going through everybody. And then they get their asses kicked by Kenny Omega and choked out and subsequently demolished by the hands of the club, of the Bullet Club, BCOG. <laughs> and... My god, it was just hilarious. Especially when Don Callis um here's the best way to describe it. Don Callis is the executive vice president of Impact Wrestling, last I supposedly checked, and he is going ahead and burying his own world champion, saying that the AEW belt is the world championship, which means that Kenny Omega will be gunning after which Swan's belt sooner or later. Uh, since Kenny Omega has been suggesting he's going to become the belt collector, which will be an awesome storyline if they are able to get enough appearances for other companies. Uh, so we should be expecting Nick Aldis to take on Kenny Omega down the road, probably. <laughs> so yeah, they go ahead, get their asses handed to them. Kenny Omega and his buddies leave, heading onto the bus, and Kenny tries to get a few more shots in, and ultimately gets what he wants out of this so i say that was a fun day for them like oh man and then we cut to tomorrow's event um aw new year smash let's get right into that let's see switch switch and Omega versus Ray Phoenix on New Year's Smash, which was originally supposed to be to end on December 30th, as the advertisement shows right here. But after the tragic passing of Bo Brody Lee, they had to delay the show and do a tribute show in honor of him. And this would... Oh boy, th this match... It was, it, it just was bonkers. Let's let's just go and say it. it was insane what they did, what Ray Phoenix showed to everyone, and they did a clear logical solution why Ray Phoenix had er rightfully earned a shot at the title because he won the number one contendership round and he was never eliminated. He had to get he had to forfeit it. But the, re the records show that Ray Phoenix was still the winner, so that means they could easily insert him into the title picture. Logic. Sweet logic. How I missed the in wrestling. So, Kenny Omega. And noticeably, if you listen, you hear that they mention Kota Ibushi and stuff that happened in New Japan. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So you should be hoping for something down the road with that. Um, and Jericho's on commentary all night. Snoop Dogg did a dive, which failed miserably. And, and it was just... And, and Ray Phoenix, like, he has to be made of rubber. He has to be made of rubber. Like, everything he does, like, he just bounces off of it. Like, when he gets slammed into the, into the ring apron... And he bounces off of it like rubber. Which would explain a lot about his about how he's able to move so well and fluidly. In fact, I've been wanting to see what would happen if Ray Phoenix took on Rey Mysterio in his prime. Like, Rey Mysterio can go, still go, but if he was in his prime, that would be insane Asylum match. And you did honestly have a feeling, wait, could Rey Phoenix actually do it? He actually has the shot. And he does the Eddie Guerrero tribute, Kenny Omega, and they did some insane bumps. Like, Kenny Omega getting stomped on his neck, 
the V trigger while Ray Phoenix is flying. It was, <laughs> yeah, and the re and the and the V trigger, uh, yeah, man, I, I I always cringe a little bit with the V trigger. It's feel like even though it's not the finish the decisive finisher of the match, except for Cody Ibushi when he used it, uses it, but. It just you hit that crack and it feels like you you like Kenny just shattered someone's skull in. Whereas in WWE when Buddy Murphy did the V trigger, it was like, oh, he's trying to mimic the Kenny Omega crack with it, but it's like WWE doesn't want him to mimic that because Vince hates Kenny Omega right now and is all bitter. I mean, like I can guess. And earlier in the night, John Moxley had cut a promo vowing vengeance upon Kenny Omega, vowing to destroy him, vowing to end his legacy. He, especially after he wrote a promo where he said, uh, "I have zero tolerance for shitty people," which I'm certainly not referencing something that horrendously happened that made me depressed, and I was glad I did not have any video content because I was not in the mental mood for that. And John Moxley is just awesome. And I was honestly thinking Kenta was going to show up on that because they, they could, he wasn't at New Year Dash from what I was hearing. And he has to, and he has to eventually take on John Moxley. And they have to eventually do the match. They have to eventually go ahead and, and reveal that Kenta was the one that attacked John Moxley because that was clearly what they're going for. But yeah. So, Ray Phoenix is defeated after two V triggers, and Kenny uses the one ring angel on him, and yeah, three count. No one kicks out of the V trigger uh, around the one ring angel, which means Kenny Omega will forever be unstoppable. But until the day, I'm hoping when the day comes, the one ring angel is kicked out. It's Hangman and Page in front of a lot big audience. However, with the virus, it's probably going to be another year or so, depending. But that's not the end. In the end, when you realize that, wait, there's only eight minutes left of the show. We're still at the eight minute mark. Um, I think something big's about to go down. So, Kenny Omega and Don Callis cut this promo together saying how everything's crazy and all and whatnot how he's the best in the world and then and then it shows and it says they witness history then we see death triangle Pac, and and pentagon being attacked by the family eddie kingston the butcher and the blade with a bunny on the side and yeah they go and kenny omega is giving the order to finish off phoenix and then here comes Gio Moxley, barbed wire, a bat in hand, and he looks ready to strike Kenny Omega down with all his vengeance after getting a stiff shot to his chest on him with it. And then everything went pandemonium when the Good Brothers showed up. Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson impact tag team gold around their waist, and they are butchering him. They're beating him down. And they take down John Moxley, and then they land him down with the Magic Killer, and Kenny Omega stomps on him and hang in the back with the bar barbed wire bat, and then, and then it just reaches NWO level insanity because then Ryan Pillman Jr. and other AEW faces that were in the crowd suddenly started coming out and started attacking all at once, trying to take down the the new Bullet Club group. And they're just beaten down left and right, up and down, and thrown through tables. It's just pandemonium. Kenny Omega with the bat and striking people down. And then, and then, um, <clears throat> and then, and, and then just like, and then Kenny Omega just goes crazy, flips the hat over his head, and says, You made me do the switch. You made me do the switch. And they continue stopping him down. And, and I actually thought for a second Kenny Omega was going to land the barbed wire bat over Moxley's head. The way it looked from that positioning they had. And then the Young Bucks come out to try and reason with the buddies. <clears throat> and then, and this would be the first time in like, let's see, Theory in the ring 
Let's see. It was uh, AJ Styles left in 2016. And what's on his belt rank? It would be the first time in like four years since Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and the Good Brothers were all in the same ring. That was several. That that I was four four what four years ago. And that was on New Year Dash, which was taking place on the same night as New Year Smash. So that was for what four or five years ago, and they're all back in the ring again. And then Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman tie up Omega, but suddenly eat take a super kick party from both the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks. And then K Omega and the Good Brothers for Don Callis put up the two sweet hand sign. Nice to know the legal system has failed WWE for once. Over the stupid trademark rule. And they start trying to say, come on, man, come on, come on, come on. And then the Young Bucks go ahead and they're all together again. And the Bullet Club has now regained control of the wrestling world. The Elite and the Bullet Club are back on top in the wrestling world. If it, and also Finn Balor regained, retained the NXT Championship from Kyle O'Reilly. So really think about this. Uh, let's see. Kyle O'Reilly has uh, NXT Champion Finn Balor, the original founder. Kenny Omega, the AEW Champion. The Good Brothers, the Impact Tag Team Champions. The Young Bucks, the Tag Team Champions of AEW. And Cody Ibushi is double champ. One of Jay White is currently MIA and currently having a mental breakdown. And then you realize, wait, this was the match that was supposed. This was how this last year was supposed to end for AEW. They were going to end with the Bullet Club reuniting. Man, and just imagine how this would have been more if they had the full pack crowd, out if there was no pandemic. Oh man, that was great, great, great matchup, great stories going on. I am excited to what's in store. Bullet Club is taking back AEW. They're retaking the wrestling world again. And oh, oh god. Oh man. And, this, and when I was seeing Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson do their thing, I was like, this is what they should have been doing in, in WWE when they got called up. Like they started off good and then it fell into the Roman Reigns must be strong thing. And we all know how that worked out for the club. And then they had to basically be AJ Styles, and then they started doing cartoonish stuff, and it was like, okay, like, I get they're cartoon, like, they are jokesters, but they're also ass kickers. So, yeah. And then, <laughs> one of the good brothers, I can't remember which one, posted a tweet saying, Bait up John Moxley! Which is the sequel to Bait up John Cena! So, I'm pretty sure AJ Styles is like, Man, I should not re-sign that contract with Vince if I knew the third party deal was gonna happen. So yeah, we got an awesome AEW Dynamite match to start off AEW's main event run. We got one of the big match like people were saying this was the best match ever on AEW Dynamite. Not not entirely in the company, but it's it's the top match in AEW Dynamite! So I'm excited to see where the Young Bucks, like the Young Bucks look reluctant to do the whole Good Brother thing and to team up with the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega with how they're all acting. But they have been giving hints that they might be turning back to the dark side. They already had given the hints during, before their match with FTR. So they have a seed planted there. So they could theoretically do that. But we'll have to see. I wonder how the other members of the, of the elite are going to do like what do you think hangman's going to do he wasn't at the show from what i saw we haven't we need to know what cody's going to do if he's going to get involved in this it's just going to be pandemonium and insanity when when we get get more results coming in on from the in the subsequent weeks and we don't know how this will impact hard to kills impact wrestling event we gotta see we gotta know we, we gotta see where this goes and i'm looking forward to every moment of it so this was Neo Reality, the Wrestleverse covering Bullet Club retaking the wrestling world, retakes the world. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other YouTube channels and my other content in the description and the links and the links provided in the description. And I'll see y'all next time. Take care and stay safe, everyone.